Hello there! How are you guys doing? Today we will make our enemies smarter. Not Terminator smart. But they will at least be able to avoid running into objects and houses. We will keep our enemies simple because this topic of enemy behavior could easily be expanded into 10 episodes. But we need to get this tutorial going. So without further ado, let's go! Just a quick reminder, all of the code I cover in my videos can be found on GitHub. Each episode will have its own branch. There's also a Discord server for this channel. Come in and say hello. If you wish to go the extra mile to support my work, you can do that on my Buy My Coffee page or becoming a member here on YouTube. Links can be found in the description below. Let's uh, begin, like always, taking a look at our current progress and what we are trying to do today. And today's task is to make the detection area of the enemies smaller and they should turn towards the player whenever they detect the player and they should not be able to go through objects or just walk through a house like that. So three things we're gonna do today. So let's begin with the easiest one by turning the enemy towards the player whenever they are close enough. Whenever we detect the player uh, I think it's happening in the prepare attack. That's where everything starts, right? It's pretty close for attack. Yep, that seems to be the starting position. It's in here. We want a method that's just turn towards player. And this one, we are just checking if we should turn left, up, down, or right. And to be able to do that, we will actually need the skeleton, no, because we're already calling the skeleton, the player and x and y. Why are they y, x? Shouldn't they be y, x? Oh well, doesn't really matter. But uh, yeah, we are going to need the player. Uh, we can see the player. We're going to use the hitbox anyway. Camera X and then camera Y. And in here we are going to say player, player. Float camera X, float, fly out, float camera Y. And I'll import that one because we're going to pass them along into this method and then we're going to calculate if we need to turn what direction or what direction we need to turn. So just like that and then create this method like so. And I think we already have this calculation done somewhere. Let's go back. Is player close for an attack? Yes, here we go. This is just checking the distance in X and this is checking the distance in Y. And we will actually have a use case for if it's a negative or a positive number. So in here, and we don't need to say character.getHitbox, we can just say hitbox. And we can say hitbox there as well, play hitbox, da da da, yes. Next, we're gonna check, are we closer in the x direction or in the y direction? So to get that, we do a simple if math, not math, math, absolute, x delta is smaller than math dot absolute y delta. If it is, that means that we're closer to the player in the x direction, so we're going to turn left or right. Otherwise, we're going to turn uh, else, maybe, use case first. Otherwise, we're going to turn up or down. And in here, we just want to check if hitbox dot left is less than parentheses here because we need this one or we can actually just copy this one that means that the player is to our right so face direction equals game constants face direction right so we are facing towards the player because hitbox left is less than player's position else if that's false, then just take the face direction here 
and say left means that we need to face to the left. Simple as that. And now we just need to do the same in here. Hitbox.top is less than this one. Player. If that's the case, then we need to look down. Because the player is below us. So let's just take one of these. Goes faster. Face direction. Down. Else. I think that is looking good. Let's take a look if it works. It should work, but let's uh, let's just check. So he comes and he did something wrong. I'm uh, below the player, but I'm closer. All right, we got some uh, some mishaps happening. Why? Actually, it's supposed to be the difference that is the largest that we're going to focus on. And it makes more sense with an image like this. The larger distance is actually the one we're going to focus on, not the shortest one. So let's restart this one and hopefully it will look correct. I'm focusing on this fella right here, moving below him. Yeah, he starts attacking down. Moving to the right, starts attacking to the right. Let's see if I go above. Yes, and to the left. All right, that looks like it's working. Next up is to make the sea area smaller so they're not attacking in the middle of nowhere. So yeah, and that is probably going to be the quickest fix or change we can do because we need to change <laughs> this one, 200. We're checking if the player is close enough for attack. Uh, we took this calculation here to the other method. We're just making sure, is it below 200? Then yes, over, no. So 200 is just a number taken out of nowhere. How about we set it to, uh, not class, but sprite, and the size times something. Uh, one is just one, but what about one and a half tile? This value, of course, can be changed as much or as little as you want. Let's give this a try. They should be attacking the player when they are closer than they were before. So the area where the enemies can actually see the player is much smaller now. And that allows the enemies to, well, attack the player more accurately, if you will. If I move just outside, they start moving away. Now we just need to focus on making sure that they don't walk through objects. Or the house, for that matter. And that method is something that's very similar to the one we're using for the player. It's in here, right? Help method, yeah. Can you walk here? This is the method in question. This is for the player, of course. We're checking bounds, then we're checking is the array list null or game object array list null. If it isn't, that means that there's something there. We check for hitting them. And the same goes for buildings, if we are hitting them or not. And let's say we didn't hit any buildings, we didn't hit any objects, we get the tiles that we are standing on or trying to stand on in the next move, we're making sure that all of those tiles are walkable and that is our collision detection in a nutshell. So we want to do pretty much the same but for the enemies, but the enemies are not going to have this walk left or right because the skeleton's behavior is just go down. If you can't go down, go up. And at some point there is a random that just checks have uh, three seconds passed, then choose a random direction. So we're gonna keep this switch. We're gonna change how we move. And if we can't move down, then we just, well, go up. And eventually we're gonna check change the direction by checking this if statement. Let's actually begin with the method. We can, uh, should we just take it? 
Why rewrite this one? Uh, can I use the same one even? I think we can actually use this method, but we won't pass in camera X or Y here. Or what did we call them for the player? We passed in delta camera X, delta camera Y. Those are not the ones we're going to pass in there. We're going to pass in here, skeleton, this change. We're trying to change the position by adding 300 to times delta. But we're going to check if we can go to that position before we do the addition. So I see no reason why we shouldn't be able to use this one. We'll test it. We'll test it. If it breaks, it breaks, then we fix it. Simple as that. So we can just comment these out and we're multiplying delta by 300 a lot. So why not just float delta uh, change because it can be both x and y is equal to delta times 300 and we're going to get a red here because it's a uh, complains about a double and not a float. So we just float this uh, over to a, or not float this over, we recast it into a float from a double. All right, uh, we're going to enter first because we're going to keep that else. So if it's going to be different. We want to check if, let's see here, help methods dot can walk here, can walk here, we need the hitbox, which is hitbox. We going down, so delta x is going to be zero, down is delta change, and then of course game map. If we can do that, then we add brackets here. And of course, else for that face direction change. We say, ah, we can actually take this one. Pass in and pass in. And then of course, instead of saying delta times 300, we say plus delta change plus delta change. Yeah, that's good. And uh, we can remove that. And of course, to make it simple, we're going to copy all of this, paste it over here. And not delta change, but minus delta change, because now we're going up. And then we need to remember to change that too. Then we had a else, then we go down. All right. Let's copy this, replace that for right. But now delta change is there for x and for y it's zero. Then we plus equals, not equals, but plus equals, else left. And copy that, paste that, and minus, minus, and minus. That should be all that we need to change. Let's just take down here, case down, can you walk there? We're not moving in X, we're only moving in Y, we're going down. And we can walk there, we do the addition, and then otherwise we change. Uh, oh, shouldn't be top and bottom for left and right, it should be left, then of course right, left, right. That looks more correct. Save it, run it, and hopefully this works. All right, they're still moving around like normally, but I need to see if one of them collides with the, oh, maybe, oh, there we go. He couldn't pass. If we have a change, oh, those two guys, yep, yeah, that is, and he bounced to the doink. <laughs> Beautiful. Now they are just a little bit smarter. They can detect solid objects, so that's good. And uh, yeah, this is of course as smart as our enemies gonna get.
I don't think we need to make them smarter. But uh, yeah, I'm happy with this. And uh, we'll see what we get into in the next episode. All right, that was a smaller episode, but we got some important work for our enemies done. Before I end this one, I would like to make a big shout out to Mr. Blue Sky for donating 15, yes, 15 coffees. That's, that's crazy. It's the biggest single donation ever for this channel. And that's a lot of money to donate to some random YouTuber like myself. Thank you again, that was extremely generous of you. Thank you. For the next episode, I haven't decided yet, but I will think of something cool for us to do. Until then, take care now and have a wonderful day. Cheers. Cheers.